Welcome to Your Business, Your Life with Matt DeFrancesco, your personal financial technician. Whether you've had years of success in your business or just starting out, Highlift Financial can help you create a vision for your business, life, and family, and align these for generational wealth. So as they say, what happens in your life affects your business. And now, on to the show. Well, hello, and welcome to a bonus edition of Your Business, Your Life with your host, me, Matt Francesco. And this is a bonus edition because I've got a repeat guest on. It's Michelle Seiler Tucker. We had her on a few months ago. Her firm is Seiler Tucker, Inc., which they specialize in mergers and acquisitions in almost every industry that's out there. I think they've sold over a thousand companies and her track record speaks for itself. She closes 98% of her deals and usually obtains anywhere between 20 and 40% above the asking price for her clients. So, and she's also authored uh, the best selling book, Sell Your Business for More. And her latest book, which is actually what we're going to be talking a little bit about today, and the program Exit Rich is now available in audiobook. So, I'm excited to hear what's the, you know, what you've been doing with the audiobook here. So, Michelle, welcome to Your Business, Your Life. Thank you. Thanks, Matt. Thanks for having me back on. It's a pleasure to be back. No, that's great. No, I'm excited to have you back on. So, you know, before we start getting into the audio book, I want to just ask you, you know, it's been a couple months since we talked, is there any changes in the environment with, um, you know, in the mergers and acquisition space? I mean, you know, are there more buyers there? Are there less buyers that the buyers changed where, you know, where do things kind of stand right now? Yeah. So I'm trying to go back and remember what, you know, what we were last time. I think we spoke somewhere in December, yeah. So, you know, last year, 2021 was a very good year for m and It's probably one of the best years in decades. Okay. Much better than 2020. 2020 was like a ghost town. Yeah, <laughs> right. Yeah. In 2020. Yeah. 2021 was much better. And then what we're really seeing in 2022, kind of the same that we saw in 2021, mm-hmm. is there, you know, there's so many buyers for great businesses, there are more there are more buyers for great businesses than there are great businesses to buy. Yeah, and so you have you know so many buyers coming after one deal. The problem is that so many buyers, private equity groups, strategic competitors, they're suffering some of the same pains that we all are. They don't have the same staff. They they don't have the same team. You know, they don't have the same analysts. Right. And so so they're short on staff and they have lots of deals in the pipeline. And so the problem is the bottleneck. So all of these companies, these buyers are feeling this huge bottleneck because they might have five, 10, 15 deals in the pipeline because they're trying to make up for, for lack of activity in 2020. Right. And then they don't have the team, the analyst team to really get these deals out of the pipeline and get them closed fast enough. So they're stalling us. So the M and A advisors, we're all we're all you know going through this pattern of, of where they're stalling and stalling and stalling because they're trying to get deals out of the pipeline so you can add more deals into the pipeline. So that's been a big issue okay, um, okay. at the end of 2021, especially in 2022. The other big issue that I see coming is that you know we're, we have several deals under contract with private equity groups and strategics and stuff and. They're all like, hurry up, hurry up, hurry up. We got to get the diligence done. We got to get this done before June and July when the interest rates go up. Yep. When money gets tied up, you know? Mm -hmm. And so everybody's like, hurry up if you want to get these deals done. Right. And I've always said time kills deals. (laughs) Right. (laughs) Because you never know what's going to happen in the market. You never know what's going to happen with the interest rates, et cetera. So, you know, that's what I'm telling all my clients right now. Hurry up if you want to get those deals done this year. Right. So you're going to see things starting to tighten up. You're going to see private equity groups, the, the activity is going to slow down okay. um, a little bit, depending upon what happens with the Biden administration, the feds, et cetera. Okay. Okay. That you know, sense. and that's what, that's exactly what I was thinking. Cause I know it, and interest rates are driving a lot of this, you know, what's happening in the markets. And then again, with people trying to buy and sell, that's going to be a, a huge, huge issue. And it's, it's actually interesting because, you know, we have a lot of market volatility and the only way to suppress that is by lowering interest rates, but then we got out of control inflation, which wow. the only way to control that is, is to raise interest rates. So it's going to be, it's going to be when you raise interest rates and buyers stop buying because right. they're not going to buy buy at that six, seven, eight, nine, you know, percent interest rates like it was way back when, right? Right. So buyers are saying, shh, we got to hope and close these deals. We got to hope and get our money when our money's much lower. Right. 
And that needs to be done now. So when the interest rates go up, which we know they're going to, right. it is going to, it is going to, you know, drive deals down. It's not, it's not going to close more deals. It's going to, it's going to keep more deals from closing. Exactly. Exactly. You know, one thing, as you were mentioning this about could be starting to freeze up, you know, I was thinking about, we were talking about a client that I have that's, that's looking to exit. What I'm wondering is because of just where the environment is, there's a lot of owners are saying, look, you know what? I'm done. I've, I'm, I'm burned out. I don't want to do this. And they want to sell. But again, we've got this tight window. What are some things that they can do to maybe help themselves and, and possibly not miss the window? Well, you know, if the window is truly June or July, you don't have a lot of runway. <laughs> right. I know that. Yeah. That was, <laughs> about six to eight weeks. All right. <laughs> so, yeah. So you, you don't have enough runway. So I always say, look, don't let external forces, external companies dictate what you do with your company. Right. Continue to grow your company. Continue to always aim, which is always innovate and market. You know, continue to prepare your business for sale. You know, the reason why 80% of businesses never sell, like Steve Forbes, who endorsed X and Rich, he says 80% of businesses won't sell. If you talk to him and I source, I'll tell you 90% won't sell. And that's because business owners don't think about selling until a catastrophic event has occurred, whether that's internal or external. Yes. You know, internal is health issues, divorce, partners, disputes, death. External is this pandemic we've been sitting in for the last two years. And it's never good to sell your business during a catastrophic event. So... You need to get out of the mindset of, oh, all of a sudden you wake up one day and going to sell your business. That's not how it happens. <laughs> you got to build that business. You got to build that sellable asset. Businesses are not selling because buyers, business owners haven't actually created a business that somebody wants to buy because they created a glorified job and wish they go to work at every day. Right. This is a business that actually works for them. So you really got to go back to the basics, read exit rich, follow what I call the GPS exit model, plan your exit now. Don't worry about the external forces. There's always going to be issues. There's always going to be obstacles. But if you build your business the right way, and if you build your business with the exit in mind, yeah, and you build it to attract many, you know, the different buyers, those five different types of buyers, right. and you build it with the end in mind, then you're going to have a sellable asset no matter what the conditions are. Right. Does that make sense? Makes complete <laughs> sense. Makes complete sense. You know what? Again, because it's been a while and maybe people didn't hear the first episode, review that GPS model because I found that to be really fascinating on, on yeah. how you look at this. Uh, so the, the GPS model is really everything. I mean, that and the six Bs. And the reason why the GPS model is everything is because, again, businesses don't sell because business owners haven't created a sellable asset that someone wants to buy. Business owners wake up one day and go, oh, my God, I can't take it in my company anymore. These employees are driving me to drink. <laughs> you know? right. I just can't take it. I'm off the bus. So I'm going to jump off the cliff. Right. And so they want to sell. But the problem is they want to sell for, you know, five, 10, 15, 20 million dollars. And their business is worth maybe a million <laughs> or two million. Yeah, exactly. Because business owners base they base the value of their business on what they need to enter the next phase of their life. Right. Not on what the business really is worth. Mm -hmm. So they say, oh, I need $20 million to retire on. So I need to sell for $20 million. Buyers don't give a crap what you need. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> Buyers care about the value that the business is going to bring to them. So the GPS model really helps you get crystal clear on determining what do you want? What is your end game? What is your objective? You know, you don't drive anywhere without Google Maps, you know, a wave or whatever app you use. You go to Google Maps and you plug in your destination. Right. And if you don't plug in your destination, where do you end up? <laughs> Maybe off a cliff. <laughs> off a cliff, nowhere. And that's what happens to businesses. That's why they're going off the cliff. That's why they're selling for pennies on the dollar. Right. That's why they're closing their doors. That's why they're filing bankruptcy. Because they're going off the cliff because they haven't planned their destination. Yeah. And business owners don't plan to fail. They fail to plan. That's it. So you need to figure out what's your destination. Don't wake up one day and say, oh, my God, I need $20 million to retire on. And I got to sell my business for $20 million. Because the likelihood of that happening is the likelihood of you winning the lottery. Right. On millions upon millions of people. It's not going to happen. Uh -huh. So you need to figure out if I want a $20 million business, that's my destination. The next step in a GPS exit model is to know where are you starting from? 
What is your current location? What is, what are you worth today? Right. And this is financial suicide, Matt, because most business owners never ever get their business evaluated. It is their most valuable asset. Mm-hmm. They don't take the time to get it evaluated. Right. It's financial suicide. I mean, we go to the doctor once a year to make sure our heart's still taking and we're still kicking. We go to the mechanic shop, which I see behind you, right. to get a tune-up to make sure the brakes are good, you know, to make sure that our car will continue to run for us. But we don't take the most valuable possession, which is our business, and get a, an annual valuation checkup. Yep. It's financial suicide because there are events that increase valuation and there are events that decrease valuation. Uh. And th- this pandemic is a perfect example of that. Oh, this yeah. pandemic put a lot of industries out of business, but guess what? I catapult a lot of industries to the next level. Right. So you always need to know what your business is worth. So let's say you want to sell for 20 million. That's your destination. Let's say today you're worth 5 million. Right. Now, the next thing the GPS model needs to know is, well, what's your time frame? Because mm-hmm. you're not going to do it tomorrow. <laughs> right. You know, you're not going to do it in those six weeks. So let's say you want to do this in five years. Now you need to know, well, who your buyer is going to be. Right. So this is very important. And most, most business owners skip this step. And most business owners don't plan this. You know, I, I go back to Stephen Covey, start with the end of mind. Yes. So there's five different types of business owners. Business owners will call me all the time and say, Michelle, all I need you to do is represent me with my buyer. I have the buyer. You just have to represent me. Okay. And I'm like, no, I won't do it. I don't blame you. I won't do it. I'm like, why not? And I said, because you don't understand. Your business is probably not operating on all six cylinders. You probably threw out some price to the to the buyer, which right. is okay on the surface. But then when they get in there and look that, that you're not operating on all six Bs, the financials are not what you're claiming them to be. And your business is probably worth a lot less than what you just quoted them. Yeah. And we have to go in and fix your business. We have to tune it up. We have to get it operating all six cylinders. We have to clean your financial house. We're not going to do that all for one buyer because the likelihood of that one buyer closing on the sale of your business is slim to none. Right. Plus, we can never maximize value on the sale of your business with a party of one. Right. So there's five types of buyers. Mm -hmm. First time buyers, 98% of buyers are first time buyers. They don't buy $20 million companies. Yeah. Businesses typically under, you know, $2 million, restaurants, coffee shops, ice cream stores. Then you have turnaround specialists. They're not buying $20 million companies. They're buying distressed assets Mm -hmm. that they can, they can fix, grow and sell. Mm -hmm. Then you have private equity group and they buy based on platforms and they buy based on add-ons. So let's say they want to get into the automotive industry. They won't even look at the automotive industry unless you have $3 million to $7 million in EBITDA. Right. Now, that's why I said there's so many buyers for great businesses. There are more buyers for great businesses than there are great businesses to buy because most private equities won't even consider you unless you have at least $3 million in EBITDA. Yeah. And there's a very small percentage of companies that have $3 million in EBITDA. Mm-hmm. And so let's say, so that's a platform, but let's say they're already in the automotive industry and they're looking at add-ons. Then they'll look at your business under a million dollars in EBITDA to complement their platform, okay? And then the fourth type of buyer is strategic slash competitors. They're typically the best type of buyer, Matt, because what do they buy? They buy synergies. They buy those contracts and those databases and that talent. They buy assets, proprietary assets, synergies that are going to catapult their current business to the next level. And the last type of buyer is what I call storm chasers. These are sophisticated entrepreneurs or industry agnostic, and they just chase EBITDA. Okay. Those are your five types of buyers. So now that you know $20 million is your price, you are five million, five years is your time frame. You're probably gonna narrow that down to private equity group strategics slash competitors are probably gonna be your two biggest type of buyers. Now you need to know what's my numbers need to look at look, look like. Where's my gross revenues, my cogs, my operating expenses, most importantly, your EBITDA. You want to sell for $20 million, your EBITDA needs to be around four to five million dollars of EBITDA. Okay. And then you need to ask yourself, well, what, the, what are the characteristics? What are synergies are looking for? What will make a buyer outbid everybody else and, and pay me more money than what we're asking for? And then you build your business based upon that GPS exit model and based upon those buyers criteria and what those buyers are looking for. It's kind of like a widget. When you go into business, you're like, here's my widget. Rather, it's automotive, rather it's marketing, rather it's manufacturing. Rather selling companies, that's your widget. Right. 
you know you're not going to be everything to everybody. So you're like, here's my ideal target market, right? Mm-hmm. And you're going to do your research and you're going to build this widget for, to meet this, your ideal target market specific criteria, right? Mm-hmm. Right. Your business is your widget. <laughs> it's your widget. It, I know. <laughs> this is your target market. You're trying to get your widget to $20 million, you know? And so when you go to get that evaluation, annual evaluation checkup, don't go to a CPA. I love CPAs. Don't get mad at me. Mm-hmm. But you really need to go to an M&A expert who's, who knows how to evaluate businesses on synergies, not just EBITDA. Right. Oh, exactly. You know, it's it's interesting because, you know, in my space, a lot of times we do, I'll do like a, kind of a basic evaluation, but I, I come out and tell them right off the bat, look, this is not a formal valuation. It's just to kind of give us an idea, but we really need to go and get that official valuation because you'll never really know until you have that. Yeah. Um, and, you know, I think the other thing, you made a point about how many owners are looking at a dollar figure because they say, okay, I need you know, this to retire, this is what I want to get, but they forget about taxes that are involved, yeah. Yeah. you know? And so that can kick up the number also. So I think it's, it's really important to first know where you are, just like you said, with the GPS, and then where do you want to go and, and understand that there's going to be other, these other factors that are involved. Well, yeah. Cause it's not about what we sell your business for. It's about what you walk away with. Right. But, but to that tune, I also want to bring up some other facts. So when a seller says, I have to have 20 million to retire on. Then we really take them through what we call a seller sanity check that we talk about in my book, Exit Rich, and really figure out where do you come up with this 20 million? Is that just pie in the sky? You know, how old are you? How long are we expected to live? Who's your heirs? How much money do you need a month, a year to live on? How long does that money need to last? Where are you investing it? You, you follow me? We're right. getting into the nitty gritty because it might be 10 million or 15 million. It's not always 20 million. But that's what they think because that's just a number they picked out of the air. Right. However, the other thing, too, is we have tax partners and we have a partner um, that's called DST. It's not a Delaware statutory trust. Right. It's something much better than that. (laughs) It's not tied to insurance. It's not tied to to charitable donations. It is a legit deferred sales trust and it can defer your capital gains. For years, you can live off the money that your risk uh, tol- uh, risk assessment tolerance, and let's say you want to draw 6%, 8%, 10%, you pay taxes off of that. You want to take that money and reinvest it in the real estate or other businesses, you can do that as well without paying the taxes. So there's lots of different strategies that we can implement and bring our, our resources and our partners in to really decrease that tax liability. So maybe you don't need 20 million, maybe you're good with 10 million, if we align you with the deferred sales trust and defer those capital gains. I, I think that's a great point because that's, at least in my experience, that's the one thing that people don't take into consideration is this is this nasty thing called taxes and how that will affect that bottom line number. And, and like you said, I think most business owners are bought it, looking at the bottom line number. What can I put in my pocket? So- well, and then the other thing too, Matt, that I think is very important to mention is they also listen to their CPA and their CPA is like, you're going to have to pay $3 million in taxes if you sell your business. Oh. So then they'll say, well, look, I'll just hold it. I'll just stay. I'll just keep my business. And I'm making, you know, maybe 3 or $4 million a year. I'll just keep it. But guess what? Nothing lasts forever. Right. You never know what's in store for any of us. You always sell when your business is on top. And listen, just because your local CPA says you have to pay $3 million doesn't mean that's accurate information. Right. That's not their core competencies. There are many few accounting firms, very few CPAs that really specialize in deferring tax and tax strategies. So you really have to get an expert opinion, expert guidance, not from your local CPA, but that's not their core competency. Right, right. And and I think that that transitions us very well to exit rich because, you know, I think uh, most business owners, they don't know really where to go to get the advice that they need. So nine times out of 10, they do go to their CPA who's not as knowledgeable or they go to where their attorney who maybe doesn't do these kind of deals. And so explain again, the exit rich program and then why you brought it out in audio book. Yeah, so it's it's very important. So when you say explain the expert program, I'm gonna say this. I don't want somebody to make a big decision on something that their CPR attorney told them. 
right. that doesn't really specialize in an area of expertise because I've seen so many business owners hold on to their business when they could have sold for 10, 15, 20, 30 million dollars. And now the business is practically worth nothing yeah. because this and this and this and this happened. So you don't hold on to your business just because somebody uses a scare tactic. Right. You need to seek advice from experts who do this every single day. And that's attorneys and CPAs and, um, and, and financial advisors to specialize in DSTs to first sales trust. And it, because I tell you, so many people have, so many business owners have lost everything because they listened to the wrong advice. Yeah. And we work with the best of the best. We've been doing this for 20 plus years. Why? Okay. What was your other question? Exit rich. Well, about exit rich. So exp- I wanted you to explain the program too, because my understanding is again, the benefit of that program is it'll help to educate you, the business owner in these the, so now it's not just you're going off the advice of somebody who may not really know. You at least got a base knowledge on yeah. it, correct? Yeah, yeah. So Exit Rich, a couple of things about Exit Rich. You know, it was endorsed by Steve Forbes. Uh, that says it's a gold mine for entrepreneurs because they leave way too much money on the table when they sell their business. Sharon Lecht is my co-author who wrote Rich Jeff Ford with Robert Kiyosaki. Yeah. Kevin Harrington wrote the forward. Exit Rich is not just about selling your business because I've heard people say, oh, I don't need that. I'm not selling. Okay. Wrong answer. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. Yeah, you should always be building your business to sell, even if you don't plan on selling it. Because if you build a business to sell, with the end of mind, you're going to build a much better business. You can build a much better widget that is sustainable, scalable, and if you ever need to, is sellable. Exit Rich, the first half is all about building a scalable, a sustainable, scalable business using the six P's that we talk about, which are people product processes provide great patients and obviously profits. And so it's about building that sustainable, scalable business. So when you're ready, you have a sellable asset. That's the first half of Exit Rich. The second half is about selling and building your business to sell. Then we also have the Exit Rich program. It's called the Road to Exit Rich. And the Road to Exit Rich program is taking business owners in where there's an evaluation gap. They're not quite ready to sell. Their business is operating on maybe two to three of the six P's. And when I say valuation gap, like we just took the client on and they, they want to sell for five million, they're worth 800,000. Yeah, right. <laughs> Big evaluation gap. So I just took this client on and we're already making huge, huge progress in just getting their business ready for sale and to bridge that valuation gap. So that program includes evaluation at the beginning. It includes walking you through the GPS exit model, it includes the bottlenecks, you know, that you're facing, usually the owners of the bottlenecks. (laughs) And then it also walks through the six Ps, you know, strengthening the weakest Ps. And we do evaluation at the end as well. And then, you know, we we put you in in our system to sell your business for your desired sales price. So that's our program. Right. Um, Why did we go audio? The reason is because so many business owners have been asking me, do you have an audio version? Do you have an audio version? Because entrepreneurs are busy. They yeah. don't always have time to read. Right. You know, they're working 60, 70, 80 hours a week. And they're trying to spend some quality time with their family. They don't necessarily have the time to read, but they spend so much time in the car, the gym, you know. So that's why we came out with the audio version because of demand. I mean, everybody kept asking for it. And, oh, Exit Rich, some updates for you, Matt. Okay. We did the Wall Street Journal bestseller. Nice. And we got USA Today bestseller and a bunch of categories on Amazon. Um, so the Exit Rich audio book for the month of May only. So go out and get your copy today. We're selling it for $2.99. Wow. $2.99. That's less than a cup of coffee at Starbucks. That's right. That's $2.99. Right. And with that $2.99, you get the audio version, plus you get all the supplements to go with it. Plus you become a lifetime member of the exit rich book club where you also get access to all my video training all the content that i provide that i've been teaching for the last 20 plus years in the trenches plus documents you get to documents uh, how you should operate your business plus the procedure manuals employee handbooks non-compete how you should sell your business sample prospectuses letters of intent purchase agreements due diligence checklist closing documents and more all the documents you need to operate and sell your company are at the Exit Rich Book Club. Buy the audio version, $2.99. Mm-hmm. 
and you will become a lifetime member of Exit Rich. It is the best money you will ever spend in your entire lifetime. It sounds like it. And, you know, it's interesting because I've started, I'm a voracious reader, but I started buying, when I buy a book, I buy the audio version too, because I can employ all my senses. I can read, I can, you know, logic. And then I hear, I just think it's much more powerful. It sticks better. And, you know, and I I think what's fascinating about the whole program is that you basically said, you know, some, I I run into a lot of business owners who are not sure like what they want to do. Like I approach them with the question and they're like, well, I don't know. I mean, I got a client of mine right now who's looking to transition the business to his one child and the key guy, but he's like, you know, but if it doesn't work out, I want to know what the value is in the business. And so I think the exit rich program is really great just to educate you on first, the things that you need to do, but also kind of help you to start formulating your options. And again, you may not be looking to exit at this point, but if you want to, or need to, at some point, it's best to be in that position. Would you agree? Well, yeah, because here's the deal. Life doesn't stay the same. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you either go in or dying. Things change. Things evolve. You know, what goes up sometimes also comes down. This pandemic, you know, nobody knew that their whole world was shut down for two years. And you just don't want to be in a position where you can't sell your business or you leave your, you set your family up for failure and not for success. I had a lady call me from Texas her husband dropped dead of a heart attack at the age of 40, left her with a mountain of debt. And she asked me if I could sell the business. Well, guess what? He didn't have a business. He had a job. Right. He had a construction company, but he had no employees. He had all subcontractors and no processes, no policies. When he died, the business died because everything was in his head. There was no business. He didn't have a business. He had a job. So he didn't set her up for success. And I can guarantee you that's not what his intentions were. Right. Right. So none of us know what's in store for us. None of us. So we have to set, we have to treat our business like the most valuable asset it is. Your business is not your baby. Go home, hug your babies, love your babies. Treat your business as an asset, like you do your financial portfolio. Yep. Always know what it's worth. Plan for the end and build the business as if you're going to sell it, because then you'll have a sellable asset. If you just wake up one day and say, I want to sell because I'm burned out, you're not going to have a sellable asset you're not going to be able to maximize value. Right. Exactly. So, so listen, Michelle, I know you have a hard stop. So is there anything, we got about three minutes, anything that you want to just uh, leave the audience with here before we go? I always say, you know, obviously go out, read Exit Ridge, get the audio version of Exit Ridge, really implement each section, especially when it comes to the six Ps. And I always say, get yourself a mentor. You know, I always say it's hard to read the label from the inside of the bottle. You need an outsider's perspective to read the warning signs and keep you out of the danger zone. But don't just get any mentor. Get a mentor that's been down the path you want to travel. Learn from somebody else's mistakes. They'll shorten your learning curve dramatically and shorten your path to success dramatically. Yeah, exactly. So yeah, they'd say that experience is not the best teacher. It's the most expensive teacher. So (laughs) (laughs) So learning from others who have traveled down the path is the best teacher. That's exactly right. So anyway, Michelle, thank you so much for being on again. I really appreciate it. I I recommend everybody go out and get exit rich, you know, just to, if for no other reason, just to educate yourself uh, for the future. So again, Michelle, thank you for being on. The last thanks goes to you, the listening audience. Thank you for being uh, listening to Your Business, Your Life with uh, me, Matt Francesco. If you've not subscribed to the podcast, please click on the subscribe button below. That way, anytime a new episode comes out, it'll download directly to your device and you can share it with your friends and family. And again, if you like what you're hearing or seeing, or if you're watching on YouTube, please give us a five-star rating. That way uh, we can get uh, Michelle and all the great guests that we have on to more people. So thank you, Michelle. And uh, take care and God bless. Hey, I really want to thank you for listening to the Your Business, Your Life podcast. If you want to be notified when new episodes become available, click the subscribe button below. The information covered and posted represents the views and opinions of the guest and does not necessarily represent the views or opinions of High Lift Financial. The content has been made available for informational and educational purposes only. The content is not intended to be a substitute for professional investment, legal, or tax advice. Always seek the advice of your financial advisor or other qualified professional with any questions you may have regarding your business or personal planning. 
DeFrancesco Financial Concierge LLC DBA High Lift Financial is a registered investment advisor. Registration with the United States Securities and Exchange Commission or any state security authority does not imply a certain level of skill or training.